Hello and welcome to another episode of Ask a Creative. Today we have, I'm not going to say old friend because neither of us are old. I'm going to say long time friend, Joella Neville. Welcome. Thank you so much for having a chat with me today. Thank you for having me. (laughs) It does seem like we've known each other forever, doesn't it? It does. It's been a long time, even though it has been that kind of distant, kind of Facebooky, kind of social media, kind of friendship thing. It's, it's been going counts. on a long time. Yeah, it still counts. I think it counts. I think we've we've both been kind of there for each other and watching all the changes that's been happening over over the years. And you know, I just have watched you and just in awe of everything that you're doing creatively. And a lot of people um, will be watching this for the first time. Do you want to give them a little bit of a background of how you started and the journey so far, I guess? Well, that's always really interesting because my journey artistically sort of started kind of strange. I was writing Um, I was up to the point of submitting to a publisher and about ready to go on that that big exciting journey and then we decided that my daughter needed to be homeschooled and so I kind of went you know what I only have one daughter they're only kids for so long I'm going to do this the best I can so basically it was like put the writing aside um, and I needed to find something that made me available um, to my daughter while she was doing her schoolwork because she's not one of these kids who come and interrupt you if she's having a problem. You had to be there and sort of available. And so I kind of went, I, I'm not a person who sits still easily. I like to do stuff. So I turned to art. And to start off with, it was just um, the Zen Tangle thing was a big thing at the time. And I went, oh, let's just give that a go. You know, like I don't really think I'm that artistic. You know, (laughs) we'll just see. We'll just see what happens. Anyway, I started off with that and that was all going great. And we travelled almost to the end of our homeschooling journey. And then I got kicked in the head by my horse, which shattered the right side of my face and left me with a brain injury, which included tremors in the hands, hand-eye coordination, a whole lot of issues. So art then became the therapy. (laughs) So I found that I couldn't hold pen steady to draw a straight line, which was what I was doing a lot with the the repetitive uh, pattern kind of designs. Um, But I found I could make lots of little dots. So I got into pointillism, which not a lot of people have heard of, but it's just lots and lots of dots. So that went really, really well. I got, um, yeah, I just started to grow in that. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, you know what, let's try some other stuff. And I kind of fell into what I'm doing now, which is sort of more photorealism with coloured pencil. Um, So, yeah, it was just a bit of a trial and error really. Like I always say I never thought I had an artistic bone in my body before I got kicked in the head. I don't advise that. Don't get kicked in the head. <laughs> yeah, it's not a prerequisite for artistic no, talent. absolutely not. But <laughs> I sometimes think, you know, like we're throwing these massive challenges and hurdles in order for us to get onto the right path that we're meant to be on. So I'm always a half glass full kind of girl, silver lining, and noise, the living daylights out of a lot of people. <laughs> but that's me. So, yeah. And I just to see you go from strength to strength as well, every single challenge that's been thrown at you, you've just gone, oh, yep, okay, well, this is what we're going to do now. And, yep. you know, even I can remember when when you were writing and you made the decision about having a break and, and homeschooling, that, that it was it was never a it was never a question of oh, no, I don't get to be creative anymore. It was always like, okay, how do I get to be creative now? And I think that mindset that you've had is just so amazing and it's so, you know, for me, so inspiring to see that you can go through all of these adverse things and just how much of that do you think that being a creative person has actually helped you to get through all of that? 
Oh, look, 100%. 100% it has helped. Um, I always thought, you know, like I was a creative kind of person, you know, like in that, you know, I enjoyed crafts and, and making things and building things and, you know, coming up with weird and crazy recipes in the kitchen, you know, so creative as a whole has always been there for me, mm. you know. But art particularly, which is, you know, my my now my favourite creative outlet, um, it's kind of, uh, it's just so weird. I really don't know how to put it. <laughs> um, it's like it was the therapy. Um, like it really became the therapy and it was, you know, like, since I've done that, you know, like I gained hand-eye coordination, um, you know, the tremors in my hands are so much less now. I can actually pick up a camera and take a semi-decent photo. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, but a semi-decent photo <laughs> without all the blur. So that's kind of nice. So, you know, the creative part, if I didn't have that, I don't know what I would be doing. Um, I, yeah. It's a huge part of my coping mechanism, my therapy, and, you know, it's it's one of those things. It's there when you wake up in the morning and, you know, it's what you think about before you go to sleep and sometimes in the middle of the night. It's something you wake up and go, oh, yeah, I've got to try that. <laughs> were, you, were you always a creative kid? Um, absolutely, I think so. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like we were never really sort of, oh, look, um, you know, pushed one way or another, like we, you know, um, very typical kids of the 80s, <laughs> we had music lessons, you know, we did a bit of sport, but, you know, it wasn't kind of like, you know, you have to do this and then you have to do that. It was kind of more organic, I suppose. Mm. Um, and, you know, I think too um, that whole time we we didn't have access to to what we've got today so um you know imagination was always there you know like um I remember my grandmother always used to say um I could have a three-way conversation with myself so I would be playing and you know in this you know very interesting dialogue with myself um and you know imagination and creativity like go hand in hand so the more you can imagine, the more creative I think you can be and vice versa. Yeah. The creativeness helps the um, whatever it is I was saying. Yeah. <laughs> so do you think um, like with, with especially as helping your daughter homeschool, did you try and kind of organically instill that in her? Like was that something that you picked up and went oh actually she's better when I give her that creative freedom or did you feel like that you had to kind of stick to schedules and things like that no, oh look our homeschooling journey was was really really very organic um in that we did two subjects we had maths and we had zoology because Alexis was big into animals and so that encompassed all of our science and English and geography and all sorts of stuff. Um, but Alexis was always really a creative kid from when she was tiny. I remember she would, um, you know, draw on every single scrap of paper she could find. And so I had boxes and boxes and boxes of all these treasured little drawings that I had till it got to the point where I went, I'm running out of boxes. So <laughs> we actually gave her um, visual art diaries and we started putting the date on the back. So when she got a new one, the date went on there. So I've now got a drawer full of all these beautiful visual art diaries that is the journey of her artistic um, little journey. But it wasn't like, oh, let's teach you how to draw. Let's, you know, and I'm, I'm a big thing with that with kids, like just give them the opportunity. Like there are so many different mediums. There are so many different outlets. Like, um, it's just give them the opportunity to feel them, play with them, manipulate them, see what it is, whether it's, you know, modelling clay or pencils or paint or whatever. It's really about it's a tactile thing as well as a learning thing. Kids are going to find what they like and what they don't like, but the more different things you can give them to experiment with, 
they're going to find their, their thing. Um, so that was what we did with Alexis, but she's gone off and she's into animals. So <laughs> That was always going to be her thing. It was always going to be her yeah. thing and that, that was perfectly be fine. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, you know, she, she was definitely artistic as a little person. She still is to some yeah. extent, but it's not her Oh, passion. well, you're her mum, so, you know. <laughs> I, think, I think there is a little bit of genetics in there. Oh, but, do you Possibly. think, yeah, do you think um, like when I go and do the school visits and stuff today and we try and encourage kids to be creative and I, I, see, I even see it with Tommy a little bit that there's this perfectionism that they, Absolutely. he gets so frustrated. If it doesn't look like how he's envisioned it in his mind and even at school like when you're doing the school visits it's like what are the outcomes of you coming what what are what are the kids going to get out of it what boxes are we going to tick and it's like well I'm not sure if just having fun and using their imagination is on your schedule but you know that's kind of what I'm about and what like I so many people talk about like when we were growing up you know 80s kids and whatever and you know it was difficult back then and we didn't have the opportunities and we didn't have all of this technology but for me that was kind of what made my childhood absolutely that was was who made me the creative person that I am today is because I would make up full-blown plays in my lunch hour and where I would be you know directing people and we'd be doing all of that stuff I can't imagine that at all And like just you know playing fairies in the trees and yes, you know, I just think I wish there was some way that we could not turn back time because there were a lot of stuff about us growing up that wasn't great, but give kids that um, freedom that we had to not care if we made a mistake or not. And you yeah. must have felt that when you were recovering about the frustration of the things that you used to be able to do that you couldn't do. Like yeah. how did you manage that frustration? Um, I think I managed the frustration through just trying different things till I found something that worked. And when I found something that worked, I just embraced that and went, how far can we take it? You know, how good can we get? I mean, I didn't know what pointillism was when I started doing it and I had a very, very lovely um, art gallery close to my home here who were very, very supportive and, you know, the lovely um, owner of the gallery would write lovely pieces for the newspaper about me and stuff and I'm like, oh, cool, this is this is interesting. I didn't know what I was doing with pointillism but okay. <laughs> That's <laughs> what you call that. <laughs> what you call that. It's all good. Um and so, look, I never had a lesson. I never had, um, you know, someone sort of say, this is how you do it. I often find people will come and sort of say, oh, who do you follow? What tutorials do you do? What online have you done courses? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm kind of like, nah. I I look at other people's works and I appreciate what they do. And if there's something that really inspires me, I kind of go, how did they do that? I want to figure out, I won't go and watch a video of how they did it. I will go and figure out how they did it mm-hmm. by sort of trial and error, which I kind of figure is the whole point of art. I don't think, you know, that the great masters, you know, were sitting down doing their tutorials while they're painting the Sistine Chapel. You know what I mean? What's the new ways that you are being creative? What is your favourite way right now that you feel like you're being creative in your life? Um, I would have to say drawing. Um, you know, uh, look, I I love pencil and paper. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I Look, you know, we, we coloured in when we were kids. Um, you know, I had a great affinity for colouring in and drawing and stuff as a kid well not drawing so much but colouring in absolutely um and I had a big thing for colour and when I sort of worked out coloured pencil like you know that it was just more than something you could use to colour in that was kind of a light bulb moment um and then oh my goodness it was 
learning that there are different types of pencils. So that was kind of wicked. Um, so, like, you know, we've, we've got the pencils that we had as kids, which are your typical cheapish kind of wax-based pencils, which are great. But then you get into oil-based pencils, which the colours are richer, it's creamier, it blends, you know, you can do all kinds of magical things with it. Um, and that was like, whoa, I did not know there were pencils and pencils. <laughs> um, so, you know, I love I love drawing. I love, um, you know, when people come and they sort of say, oh, look, I want you to do a picture of my horse or my dog or my cat or, you know, our recently departed pet kind of thing. It's hard and I do have that perfectionist trait and I want to give and I hope and aim to give 110% in every single picture that I create especially those that are commission based with a specific thing in mind um I often feel guilty because like I can see as I look back through my work I can see that you know I have grown and so I kind of feel like oh my gosh those people who got commissions like you know way back like three years ago uh, <laughs> they got so ripped off like I'm so much better now you know um, but that's that's just creative and that's just yeah. the process and learning and you get better. The more you do stuff, the better you get at it. Surprise, yeah. surprise. So learn by doing. We're all just exactly. kind of fingering it out as we go along. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But that whole, and I see it quite a lot, that whole perfectionist thing, you know, people, um, Online, particularly, you'll like, I mean, there are quite a few pencil, color pencil groups and that sort of stuff. And, you know, people will follow this person or do a tutorial and then get frustrated because it's not how it looks on the thing, on the illustration. And I kind of think, I think you're missing the essence of being creative. You're just copying, you're learning by rote, if you will. Um, you know, this is the picture that we're going to draw and this is what you're going to do, blah, blah, blah. I think sometimes you need to make the mistakes and allow yourself to go, you know, that's not that good. Oh, well. I'm funny. I get halfway through a piece, nearly every single one. I get halfway through and I get to the yuck stage and I go, mm, I don't like it. It's horrible. Oh, yeah. But... I'm a person who also persists, so I will push past the whole yuck stage and I'll get to the end of it and I'll go, you know what, that's not bad. Love so it. I think we think we need to allow ourselves to not be limited by that idea of perfection. And I think particularly with our kids is encourage them to be artistic and creative and however it turns out, is perfect you know what I mean like yeah. um it's going to turn out the way it turns out and whether it's not quite what they had in mind it's still perfect exactly the way it is um but I don't like using that word particularly because we're trying to get away from the whole perfectionism thing yeah. um but yeah kids need to learn that you know it's okay for it not to be perfect and it's absolutely fine as it is yeah, even better sometimes because it's more them. It's got their signature, you know, heart mark on it. Exactly. I kind of think, you know, um, I'm quite grateful in a way that I didn't go and have lessons. I didn't, you know, follow any particular person because I kind of feel sometimes when that happens, you just become a product of that person or that person's style. You're not really developing your own style or your own way of doing things or your own, like I like to think each of my my drawings has a little bit of me in it. Um, I, probably, I probably don't draw typically, you know, the way a lot of people do and I've had a few professionals chip me a few times for, for different things I do but I'm kind of like, you know what, it works for me and I'm pretty damn happy with how it's turning out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if it's not the same as everyone else, I'm cool with that. 
And there's room for everybody. It's just like with writing. There's room for a gazillion stories and there's a room for a gazillion authors. So, you know, a gazillion artists so needed and if not more. So it just makes sense. Yep. Yeah, I think if we yeah. all produced exactly the same thing, what would be the point? Exactly. Um, and I think the journey is learning what works, learning what doesn't work, learning how different pens or paints or pencils or whatever interact with different types of paper. Like, I mean, who knew there were hundreds of different types of paper to choose? Yeah, from? I mean, it's like scientific. The, I know it becomes quite, you know, involved. Um mm. But, yeah, it's all about that experimentation process and and feeling how it works. Like, you know, some pencils I love on particular papers. Others, nah, it just doesn't gel. Um, you know, and I've tried lots of different things, but, you know, I found the ones I like and the paper I like and mm -hmm. I'm sticking with that for a while and we'll yes. see how we go. That is so cool. Do you think you'll ever go back to writing or have you found your um, look I have found my happy place and look my writing oh look my mum would love me to go back to writing I'm sure she would but I kind of feel like the book that I originally wrote was a book that I had to write mm. it in itself was a journey of healing in just in writing it and yes it was fiction totally fiction um, but I'd, you know, gone through a lot of stuff, was having some, you know, emotional difficulties and, you know, people would say, oh, you know, journal, write how you feel. I'm like, yeah, if I write, I feel like crap. You know what? I feel like crap. Um, but I found by writing fiction, I could make my characters feel what I felt. They didn't have to be doing what I was doing, but I could put that emotion and that feeling into what my characters felt and so it was very cathartic in that respect um and so it was a story that had to be written and look there are probably other stories in my mind um not going to say they're not but, <laughs> but I don't have that driving compulsion to put it on paper like I did particularly with the first one um and you know um I may go back to it I may, but at the moment, I think my first love is is drawing. That's <laughs> well, so cool. that's and that's something <laughs> that you may not have discovered if you hadn't have gone through all of those twists and turns. Exactly. In your life. Exactly. If if I had, you know, if I hadn't decided to homeschool, if we hadn't had a major accident, you know, like there are lots of little things that you know mm -hmm. um, contributed to it. So. You know, I'm going to look for those positive things. I'm going to look for that silver lining and, you know, find it where I can and celebrate it, embrace it and, you know, sit down, have a cup of tea. Look. Yeah. That's what you do. That's what yeah. you do best. Exactly. <laughs> so for anyone watching who's really struggling with that perfectionist aspect of it, because I know there's a lot of people and even you know, us both to a certain degree when we both started out thinking that there had to be a perfect time or that we had to reach a certain level or tick certain bo boxes. Yes. Boxes before we were even allowed to start. What What would you, yes, what would you say to those people watching who are like almost waiting for permission to start? Um, Don't wait for permission. Give yourself permission. Say, you know, you want to try this? try it there is no harm in trying um if you make a mistake it doesn't matter a journey artistic um anyway in being creative whether you're writing or not don't compare yourself to other people your journey is against yourself um my goal is to be better than i was my this piece to be better than my last piece tomorrow to be better than today um, I try not to compare myself to other people's journeys because they're on a totally different path to me. And I think you've just got to let yourself be and kind of go, well, this is where I am, this is where I'm at, and this is me, um, and celebrate that and be okay because none of us are perfect. 
So nothing that we produce is going to be perfect. And, you know, we're all in the same boat. Um, yeah, pretty Just much. Start. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Joe yeah. says... Just do it. Joe gives you permission to just do it. That's that's exactly. what it is. <laughs> so if somebody wants to, yeah, if someone's um wanting to find out more about the art that you're doing now and and you know maybe contact you and and ask you some questions, is there a, a good way that people can get in contact with you? Um. Well, I I I'm not on a huge amount of platforms. I have my Facebook. Um. So my business page is Doodle Punk Designs. Um, and if people message me through that, I'm going to get back to them. Um, follow me if you like. That's cool. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I do. A, yeah, I don't. I I'm not. You know, putting out videos on how to do stuff, or um, only because I'm not a person who's who does like who's followed others. So it's not something I'm prepared to go and put out there and do because you know I think it's a very personal journey, and you know. You've got to make your own style. So Absolutely. I don't want little copies of me. Um, no. So, yeah. There is only one Joe. Nobody could cover you at all. That's it. But <laughs> oh, I will put a link to your Facebook page in the comments. Yep. So anybody who does want to um, either contact you or have a look and see what you're doing, they'll be able to um, yep. follow yep. you. And um, I just, I mean, We've, we've, even though we haven't, you know, we're not neighbours, we've known each other for a very, very long time. And one of the things that, that I was saying that has always made me just really look up to you and respect you is the way that you can find a way to take something that other people would feel as such a negative, insurmountable problem and just look at it from a different angle. It's almost like you're the, when when I picture you and me in the same playground, it was like you were the girl hanging upside down from the monkey bars and I was the girl sitting on the ground kind of looking up into the sky and I think we meet somewhere really lovely in the middle. <laughs> and and I just, I wanted to thank you so much for all of your support for me over oh. the years. And um, I yeah. admire you tremendously when I, well, look at you. Oh, off around the, the globe doing your research and your, your writing and collaborating and screenwriting. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, when does she sleep? <laughs> oh, no, not, I don't sleep a lot, but that's okay. But that was one of the reasons why I wanted to start doing the the videos and the interviews is because I wanted people to see that this is not a cookie-cutter thing. There's not one way that you have to do this. There's not like a... We can't give you a formula. We can't say these are the steps and if you follow all these steps and do exactly what somebody else has done, you're going to get exactly the same results because it just it doesn't work doesn't like work. that. The industry no. that we're in, it doesn't work like that and creativity doesn't work like that. So I think you're just such a, a great example of that, of, of forging your own path, you know, through the wilderness and being okay with not being like everyone else and just finding a happiness in expressing that part of you that makes you so special so thanks so much joe for coming and having a chat um it's always lovely to catch up and i wish we could do it more often oh i know i mean aren't we lucky we do have technology we can yes. have a chat but yes. yes you know like okay we're still in the same country but that's still a long way away <laughs> it is a long way away we'll catch up very soon but thank we you will. so much and, and sharing all of your beautiful nuggets of wisdom today i really appreciate it oh, i don't know if i gave you too many nuggets but thank you there were nuggets trust okay. me okay <laughs> all right <laughs> thank you everybody for watching don't forget um go to the comments and you will find a link to joellen's facebook page Follow her, follow her journey, support her by just giving her a like every now and then to let her know that, you know, we, we're we watching and we see all the beautiful work that she's doing. And we will see you on another episode of Ask a Creative.